Good afternoon, grade 12. We will now proceed to our third lesson for research project. And this lesson has something to do with the format that you are going to consider or follow for the respective researcher, researches that you're actually going to do. But before I proceed, because there aren't so many that are around, I'd like to just, as the session is already recorded, I'll just mention the names of those who are present as of this time. So we have, because this will take part for the attendance later on. You have Trisha, Troy, Raisa, Lexinet, Joyce, Nicole, Nathan, and Chriselle. Names that have not been mentioned are those of students who have not entered the class yet or will, yeah, or will just probably be absent for the entire period. So for the purpose of proceeding with the discussion, let me share to you this screen. I hope everybody can see the screen now. The one where you could find Imrad. Okay. So this is the format that you are going to follow. It will not be composed of chapters. We, there is no such thing as a chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and so on. We will eliminate the chapter labels, but we will label the parts as introduction, methods, results, and discussion. The acronym for IMRAD. Uh, the acronym meaning the letters for the acronym IMRAD. Uh, Benjamin is here. Benjamin has just joined the call. So IMRAD begins with the introduction, which basically sets the stage for what is to come. Just like any any format out there, there needs to be a part that tells readers of what is supposed to be uh, to be found in the paper. Just like the rationale of your page format, there is a part, uh, the rationale serves as a part that gives readers sort of, a, of an idea of what is supposed to be, of what's being discussed in that research paper. As said, it should provide the background and rationale for the proposed project on why it is important and what it's about, on why the study should actually be conducted. So all of these, again, are going to be tackled or be presented in the introduction format. More or less, you just have to simply recall the guide questions that you encountered or the reminders that were given to you at that time that you had your uh, rationale, when you made the rationale of your research paper. It should succinctly contextualize the problem in one, take note of the length, take note of this length. Um, the problem needs to be contextual, contextualized in one to three short paragraphs. And these paragraphs already include a brief statement of the problem. See? It does not have to be long. You just have to tell us what your study will be all about, why it's important to talk of that study or of these variables involved in your study. And these discussions will have to be placed in a matter of one to three paragraphs. By the way, before I proceed, remember the concern last time that I placed regarding the available number of copies for capstone? As my capstone before follows the IMRAD format, um, perhaps one of you could get the copies from me. Like the eight copies. Anyone from you, just, just contact me, but I, I don't have the copies here in school. I have the copies at home. So if you could get them, uh, if you want to get them today, it's fine. If you want to also get the copies tomorrow, that's also fine. Just inform me ahead of, ahead of time so that I can have them prepared. I, will, I don't intend to bring those copies to school because each copy is more or less this thick as it is a compilation of pro, uh, research, researches in a particular class where there are like 13 or 14 researches. In terms of the length, the recommended length of this introduction in our format is, what do you mean by that measurement? What do you mean by this measurement, Trisha? Shang? Less than one page? Yes, less than one page. Recall, how long were your rationales before? Five pages, four pages. The page format allowed it. 
or the page format in the practice of today still allows it. But in the format that we will do, there's no need to proceed into, or there's no need to create something that lengthy when you can, when in the first place, it can just be presented in shorter terms. This is again where I'd like to re-emphasize the principle of parsimony. Let us not forget that when we make researches, we, we should not make it as though we are participating in a contest of length. We will make a research paper because there's an idea that you want to present and there's no particular length in the presentation of that idea. If the idea is presented in very few sentences, then let's go with that. There's no need to make it long. Which means that, let's try to borrow this. Uh, let's have an example. If this, wait, that's a Q, you know, no wait. Let me, I, I'm looking for a short one paper. This is not a strong one. It's just me for a while. I'm borrowing this, Nicole. I uh, know, um, Chrysaline. Let's assume that it looks like this. So the label introduction will be found somewhere here, or if not somewhere here, depending on the finalization of our format. And it should not go beyond this paper. That's the full length of the introduction. And take note, that length is already placed in double spacing. That has already been double spaced. Um, any, any question, any concern? Because I perhaps a few of you thought that this length, recommended length of less than one page is on a single spacing set uh, format for, for the paragraphs. No, that's already being double spaced. But take note, this is the recommended length. If it turns out that your paper should really go for more than one page, maybe I'll consider it, but let us not go for, for more than two pages. That's our goal. Let, let's put that as an agreement. We will not go, oh, the recommended length again of the introduction is less than one page. If it should go beyond a page, then it will not go beyond two pages. So one page to two pages. But the best length would be less than one page for the introduction. The introduction has a subsection. And this subsec subsection could probably be placed on the second page. We are talking about the description of the problem which describes the specific problem you will address. Your project is trying to address. Remember, in the introduction, it's the problem, the general problem itself that will be presented. When you go to the description of the problem, this is where the specific problem will be addressed. Like what you really want to carry out, specifically, concretely express it there. It should clearly state your goals for the project, like what you hope to accomplish. If your project is in the nature of providing a product or the provision of a service, describe these products or services. How that project will also be benefiting your profession, in your, uh, some other institutions, organizations. What part is this in your page format? How the project is likely to benefit your profession, institution, or organization? This is your... What part is this in your research paper? That's the significance of the study. However, when you present the benefits, it does not have to go as uh, how you did the enumeration in your previous format. There's no need for you to go with teachers, period. The teachers will be able to, parents, period. The parents will be able to know. There's no need for something like that. Most, more importantly, look into what the community, what the school, or yeah, the, your immediate community can get from the study that you are uh, proposing as a way, in a way that you are trying to provide a solution to a problem. 
Ali, there's something else. The recommended length is similar to one page. So, so far, uh, what's, what do you mean by similar to one page? In research, a paper that is similar to one page in length would be, you can use just one page or not the entire page of a single paper may be used. Or the third option is you have used the first page and you went to the second page, but it did not uh, go it did not go beyond the middle line of the second page. So, so that's like one and a half. That's considered similar to a page. And that's the recommended length of the description of the problem. So assuming, assuming that your paper really strictly followed the recommended lengths. So, so far, for the introduction, including the description of the problem, you have just used two pages. Less than one page for the introduction with its, with its subsection as the description of the problem, another page, so two pages. The next part, methods. For the letter M in Imrad, methods. This describes the process you undertook or will still undertake, depending, of course, on the nature of your research. If it's for a research proposal, then you will have to talk of what you will undertake. If it's about a study that has already been conducted and then you're going to proceed to an oral defense, then more or less it's going to present the steps that have been undertaken in order to complete the research. However, it should be, the steps should be presented as a process description, not as a lab manual procedure, meaning it should be in narrative form. But of course, details are still there. Details of the experimental procedures are there. It should describe the techniques for tracking variables and explains analytical techniques used. If it reaches that point where your method is learned from someone else's work, in here, you will all, in the methods part, you will indicate the authority or the study or the reference of that particular source. Remember in the intro, introduction and rationale, have we mentioned anything about related literature? We did not. Nothing was said about the related literature or related studies. However, there is a part later on that will require the mentioning of them. So far, we have the first part, which is the methods, just in case, again, like for instance, if Trisha is doing a study on how to, uh, a study regarding a mosquito repellent, that Trisha wants to use a particular plant and extract it, its extract will be uh, used as a mosquito repellent. There is an available design that has been, that could be found in the internet. So what Trisha will do is, the researcher, of course, you'll still, have, you'll still have to speak from a third person point of view. The researcher followed the, di the, the research, no, not design, the, the, the design, oh, how do you call that one? The setup. Uh, the researcher followed the setup used by, assuming that the, that the previous researcher is Orashad. Um, the researcher used, that is the setup used, uh, proposed by Oracion 2012 in a study in his study entitled so see the first the citation for the use of the method is provided in this same part of the Imrad format because it is already stated here that once you have techniques used you will have to explain why that technique is used you have to explain why that technique turns out to be the best technique that's applicable for the study that you are doing if that technique is cited from someone else's work, the citation will have to be provided. In the methods, you just need to describe your specific experiment method. You don't even need to include an equipment list. There's no need to do an enumeration of what were used or what instruments, materials, or tools will use, were used. It just comes out in the description of what has been done. Like for instance, 
uh, one fourth of the uh, the researcher took one fourth of the water sample and placed it on a beaker. The measurement reached twenty mL. See, it can it can be like it, it can be like that. You don't have to say tools uh, tools and equipment used. Number one, beaker. Number two, this. Number three, no. There's no need for a listing to be done. Because then again, what you'll do will mention what were used and what, yeah, what ingredients, what tools, what materials were actually used. And most importantly, the method section is written in paragraph form. It is not going to appear like a cookbook or a series of steps. Narrative paragraph form. Not numbered, not, not uh, numbered like how a recipe book looks like or a cookbook looks like. Uh, there, it includes reasons why the team took certain measurements or chose to use certain equations. It does not tell us what was discovered because that information should be in the result section. It is also possible that when you do the method section, you'll break it into subsections. Only if necessary, if appropriate, then feel free to break it into subsections. Like for instance, methods, Roman numeral one, gathering of sample plant, of plant samples. Roman numeral two, extraction, of, yeah, obtaining of extract from plant samples. Number three, culture of bacteria, culturing of bacteria. These are the three subsections. And each sub subsection will have its paragraph or paragraph presentation or narrative description of what the researcher actually did. But of course, when you do subsections, be sure to provide the label of what basically happened in that subsection or what that subsection is all about. Do not just put a Roman, Roman numeral number one without naming it. The method section includes visuals that are labeled and referenced in the text. Tables in parent and graphs are numbered consecutively in the report. And they should also include a title. Anyway, the providing of a title, the providing of a reference, that's similar to what you did in the format for research in your PR2. Visuals should be large enough to read the units. Each, however, each visual does not extend across more than one page. This is probably an issue, an issue that we were not able to fully resolve back in your page format. Remember, I could, I could recall your, whose study was that? I think it was yours, right? That the table consumed an entire page. As much as possible here, we will avoid situations that are like that. Besides, if we can create subsections, then again, we go with the subsections. Decimal quantities include a zero before the decimal, decimal point. For example, you have 0 0.05. Then you have also a format for math mathematical expressions and equations are spaced apart from the text. The next part, we go with the letter R, which is for results, the results. The results would plainly state what came out as major findings. No interpretations attached. It's just a matter of saying whether there was a, a positive result, there was a negative result. If the plant, plants grew, they grew by how much? Plant A, after seven days, plant A had a total of, or plant A grew by seven centimeters. Plant B grew by 12 centimeters. Plant C did not grow at all. There's no need to attach explanations like this is caused by, no. You just have to simply dictate what came out, uh, state what came out. No interpretations needed. There's no need to explain why such results or uh, why such cases turned out to be. The results present the data using graphs and tables to reveal any trend that you found. 
it may be chronological or in the order of most to least importance. It's also possible that if you use if you use tables and graphs correctly, or that your use of tables and graphs is good, then there's no need to have several paragraphs to present the results. Because again, the, the tabular presentation is already capable of presenting the trend of the results. Like for instance, uh, if only I brought with me the sample capstone project. Do I have a sample capstone project? I think for a while, excuse me for a while. I'll check if I have a sample capstone project. I'll stop the sharing of the screen for a while. I don't have any of their capstone projects. Wait. They're not really here. They're not. I'll share again the same screen. So the idea, I tried to look for a previous file for a capstone project that made use of a table. And then the presentation is tabular. And then the discussion isn't long anymore. So like for instance, you have on the first column, number of trials. Second column, result, uh, result for day one. Third, colo uh, third column, result for day two. Third column, result for day three, up until day seven. If your presentation of results in that, ma is in that manner, your reader can right away see for him or herself how the plan, assuming if it's about plans, how the plant has grown in a span of seven days, or if there's really a significant change in the growth of the plant from day zero to day seven, or from day one to day seven. So again, if your tables and graphs are used, used well or used correctly, then there's no need to present a lengthy discussion in paragraph four. The table, the tabular presentation would more than suffice for that purpose. Important note about visuals. Often you'll find it more compelling to include two sets of results with one graph. Like if you are comparing the distance in time between peaks for various concentrations of alcohol, include these findings in one paragraph. It's easier to read. It's, it's easier to read a comparison of it visually, the data are together rather than across paragraphs. So especially when you do comparisons of information, comparisons of data, like for instance, you have a controlled variable and an experimental variable. It's, if, if possible, just put them together in one table because a comparison, the trend of comparisons becomes more vis visible and easy. It also becomes easier to interpret. That's just a reminder as well. Another thing, the results organized logic should be organized logically and you should use headers to emphasize the ordered sections. You report mainly uh, when you create the results section, you are mainly there to report. You don't discuss or interpret. Findings are matters of fact. Interpretation fluctuates with perspective, opinion, and current knowledge. That is why we put that on some other part. Then... You can do visuals with text. Labeling is important. And that authors have added subsections to organize the data. It's fine that you can put in subsections. Like for instance, result. If you want to do the result section in subsections, it's fine. Like Roman numeral number one. 
extraction results. Then you'll put there the, how much were you just able to extract given a particular method. If your study is about methods, negative results are results that are still worthy of being presented. We do not just simply brush off neg negative results. Like for instance, if the results are negative and that they did not match your expectation, you'll just think of doing another research or revising your methods. I will not also prohibit you from doing that, but if you come up with a negative result, you can also just simply present the negative results. It's fine. But if it's in your decision, if later on, as a researcher, you realize, I think there's something wrong that I did. I'll try to modify my methods. Actually, you can do that. But do not just simply ignore the negative results that you have. Who knows? The results might just turn out to be still negative, even if you have revised your methods. Even if you have decided to improve your methods, results will still turn out to be negative. So that just might really be the case. There's just nothing, you, it's quite expected for results to really remain as negative. So accept the negative results. While the results section is supposed to be objectively, is supposed to objectively describe your research results, it is actually slightly subjective in the choice and order of findings presented. That's the subjectivity of the results section in terms of the order of the presentation of results. In terms of the order, like you get to decide which among the, which should be presented first. In terms of importance, perhaps. The last part, the letter D, is for the discussion section. This is where you offer your interpretations and conclusions. When findings have just been, while findings have just been stated in the results section, the explanation on why these findings came out are provided in the interpretations section. Or the, I provided in the discussion section with the use of interpretations. Like, how do your results relate to the goals of the study? How do they relate to the results that, I, that might have been expected from background information, obtained lectures, textbooks, or outside reading? This is where you can rely on some related literature to explain why particular results came out to be. If you go back to the introduction section, we did not mention a related literature. We did not uh, mention any of that. If results are positive in the discussion section of the IMRAD format, you will now include citations that support such positive results. If you're assuming that your study is about fertilizers, it's about chicken bone, a chicken, uh, yeah, the use of chicken bones as fertilizers. And then results turned out that the plants grew well, like the height was the height of the plant plant was quite observable. The growth of the height was quite observable. The color of the leaves are uh, the color of the leaves is quite different compared to other plants it's healthier the thickness of the stem is is quite good so as it turns out chicken bone became a good fertilizer for the plant in this section of the imrad format you will now provide a literature that explains a related literature or related study that explains or supports the results that you obtain this is different from your page format. Recall your page format. Diba what you did first was to look for literature. Your chapter one, one of, you, one of the tasks that were given to you for chapter one was to look for some related literature that could support your study. In the Imran format, you can do that one, the searching of literature, but there, nothing, has been nothing must be declared yet in the introduction section. These literature will only be declared to explain the findings that came out in your experimentation or in the gathering of the data. And these literature will be indicated or stipulated in the discussion section. 
this is uh, the discussion section is also the area where you could synthesize analyze evaluate evaluate interpret and reason effectively all in the all geared towards the interpretation of results and eventually after having interpreted result uh, interpreted all of the results you can arrive at your conclusion like you were able to interpret that the plant was a good for uh, the plant grew well because the fertilizer was this and that so you can conclude that chicken bone can really be a good fertilizer you don't um yeah you don't need to bring in theories to explain your ideas beyond what you have learned in class all right they are just more or less the same you explain key limitations questions left and answered major experimental constraints lack of correlation negative results here let's try to emphasize this in case negative results came out the discussion section is an opportunity to explain why the results are negative you can also explain here what your limitations are your the, not necessarily the scope like what you were not able to consider or include in the gathering of the of the data or the performance of the method of the experimentation this is also you uh, it's here oh. it's and um, whether your study is in agreement or in contrast with previously published work um i'm not who was there someone from you last school year who were able who was able to cite a literature that came to be in contrast with their study is there someone think, from your class? I think it was our sir. Who is this? Uh, Benjamin? Sorry, sorry. Because I cannot see everybody. Benjamin, was it your study that tried to uh, go against someone's literature? Yes, sir. Okay. That's actually good. That's more than acceptable in research. In this format, in the IMRAD format, of course, we highly welcome the possibility that your study provides a contrast with the literature that you want to also cite but be sure here's a bigger challenge be sure that when your study is uh, comes out to be in contrast with an already established literature first and foremost your study should have done the right methods you can't expect to have good uh, you can't expect to stand on good grounds that your study is in contrast with another study if in the first place the methods you did are questionable or if not incorrect only when the methods you did are really correct justified that you have really explained why that's the right procedure or those are the right steps that you had to conduct or to do only then can you really stand on good ground as to why the results are in contrast with an already established or published research work but don't fret again a contrast of results can be presented but of course if it turns out that your study agrees with someone else's study with someone else's published work then that's fine let's not also make it a worry that if your study when results came out your study contradicted someone's work or a published work let's not revise your study right away just so it would agree with a published research paper look into what made your work your research contradictory to and to a published research work if again you can trace that what you did were all correct your methods are correct the procedures are all correct then let the results stand and then explain the contrast in fact because of possible contrast you can offer positive a possible alternative hypothesis you have the all in the discussion discussion section you have to also provide a general conclusion while noting your reasoning and main supporting evidence recommendations are provided here you recommend areas of future study and explain your choices but take note in the discussion section we don't anywhere label them as conclusion then the paragraph for the conclusion no recommendation the paragraph for the recommendation we don't anymore do that everything is presented in paragraphs 
Like, it's just a regular long composition. But then, the division of the composition into several paragraphs would tell the readers that, okay, we are now reading at this point the conclusion. Oh, okay, this time we are now reading the recommendations. Transition also counts here. I mean, you should provide correct transitionary expressions, transition markers. Yeah, more or less, you hypothesize why certain results were unexpected. You explain why the results occurred. The discussion section provides all of them. We do not also repeat the visuals in the results section because the results section is done. Yeah, those are the rest of the contents of the discussion section. Questions? Questions regarding Imran? There's one format still that I have not presented. I have not presented this one yet because this will stand as a separate lesson. It is something to do with referencing. Referencing, and that includes citations. Which I believe you've already had in English or academic and professional purposes. I know, you're taking it now. Oh, okay, okay. So that's a good tie up perhaps that you can also while you you are going to discuss it in English for academic English for acad you can do its actual applications for research project especially that we are going to follow a particular format here and that we should be straight everybody should follow the format any sir, questions so far yes yes what is what is principle of parsimony sir the principle of parsimony lex tells you that a brief research paper is believed to be more comprehensive. Research is not a contest of length, but a contest of substance. The wrong notion, there's that wrong notion that the younger students have developed that if their research paper is thick, they think that it's a good research paper. I would not say that it's not a good research paper. What I would rather say is the, the Quality of a research paper is not dictated by its thickness. If your research paper is not thick, like if it turns out to have like 20 to 25 pages, that does not mean that your research paper is poorly constructed. I hope that by now you can imagine how long your, your, your research project papers may seem to be. Perhaps you can just... Yeah, maximum probably would be 27, 27 pages, 25. And that includes the preliminaries down to the curriculum vitae. Questions? How are your research topics? By the way, on the question of whether you'll do a paired research work or an individual research work, um, I cannot yet finally say something about it now because we have yet to finalize the actual number of students in your class. Once that's finalized, we can proceed then with the final decision. But, uh, but if I were you, I'll just prepare for an individual research work. I'll prepare ahead of time for an individual research work. I'd like to make a follow-up regarding your research topics. Uh, Lex, what's your research topic? About so for fertilizer, sir. What about the fertilizer? The hopefully not the chicken bone. No, the goat bido, sir. Kanang goat poop. Oh yes, sir. And okay. cow. By the way, when you do these researches, let's not also forget the principle of protection. Uh, the principle of protection tells researchers that the research participants and the researchers themselves should be free from any possible, from any harm or threat. Any possible form of harm or threat. You should not endanger yourselves when you do your researches. I've had a capstone project before that wanted to study the use of as a cream that they have to apply on the skin, human skin, in a, and their goal is to know whether that cream 
repels mosquitoes. I asked them at first what their initial methodology is. Their simple response is, sir, we have a container and then we will apply the cream on our hand and then we will put our hands inside the container. If, as, if there are red marks, sir, that means that the mosquito bit us. My God, what if the mosquito is a carrier of something life-threatening? So they were not able to proceed with that design. Another thing, uh, I wait. The good thing though is that our your researches will not necessarily be published because when you make a research that wants to use an animal, you'll have to also consider ethics. Like, sir, can I do a research, sir, where I would use, well, where I would create a facial, no, a, a cream on the skin, you cannot experiment on human beings. You cannot, you cannot just simply ask someone, uh, wait, Joyce, can I ask you to be my research participant? Why? For what purpose? I'll apply something on your skin. And what if something happens to the skin of Joyce? So who will be blamed? In order to avoid these situations, with permission in ethics, you can experiment with animals. What's the animal who has uh, the closest resemblance to human skin? What animal is it, Joy? Monkey. Monkey. <laughs> we, were not, we are not talking about your skin, like <laughs> it. <laughs> yes, Joyce. What animal has the closest resemblance to the uh, to human skin? Pigs. Troy. Uh, pigs. Pigs, correct. Just imagine that. Oh, you cannot just also say, Sir, can't I just experiment with one pig? No, one pig stands as one experimental unit. Another pig has to stand as another experimental unit. Then comes another pig. And what if your design requires five experimental units? And again, even if there are animals, you, need, you, would, you would still need to get the approval of the ethics board. In the absence of the ethics board of the school, what has been commonly practiced by schools in the city is to ask for the DENR head to approve for that study to be conducted. However, since we will not do any publication of your researches, if you have these animals, <laughs> If you have these animals at home, feel free to experiment with them. But I know mine is, I know mine is, sir. I know what is mine now. Yes, what is it, Lex? Insecticide. Insecticide, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, let me just also share this to you. The group of Ridel Nini, this was one group that I accompanied to the Pitan for a research conference, wanted to determine a particular, I wanted to create a particular concoction that could clean that could whiten the teeth. Mm. Guess what they did for the experimentation? Baking soda. They did, did, not, they did not use the they did not use the shell that's used in Colgate advertisements. No, they did not do that. What they did was to go to a dentist, a dental clinic, and they asked for extracted teeth from the dental clinic. And they were able to obtain a lot of extracted teeth, which uh, to where the, the extracted teeth were submerged in several solutions that were resembling the situations where the human mouth can cause some stain, or where, where the teeth can be stained while it's still in the human, while they're still there. So they did simulations of these uh, situations. But take note that they had to get the, the they, they had to use the actual teeth, extracted teeth. And there's also an available tooth shade online. A tooth shade is a tool that guides you on up the discoloration of the teeth. So that would tell you if that color is healthy and that the color is not healthy, a healthy color. That tool is available online. For instance, oh, if you want to talk about that study, then you'll borrow the tool online. In the method section, you should indicate 
the source of the tool or the person who provided the tool. So that's part of the citations in the method section. Um, Miguel has already told me his choice of a problem last time. He also did this. So I think, Miguel, your problem is a go, more or less a go now. Yes. Okay. That's, so the format is now given to you, Miguel. So you can make a draft of your papers. By the way, there was this. Uh, there was something that I thought of during the weekend. This reminded me of what I did with the uh, studies in another school. In in the previous school, I gave the students the opportunity to work on research individually, or if not, with a group. Because if you, as a researcher, prefer to do that research by yourself, I will not stop you. But if you feel like you can't do it alone and that you need another person to assist you to act as your support system, then you can. Perhaps I'll consider this idea, but the most number of members in a group will just be two. So it's going to be a paired work or an individual work. But we have to, of course, again, know the final number of students in your class. Ninia, what's your choice of a research topic? Uh, yes, Rai. Yes, Rai. Anything, Rai? We're not Malaysia to be 14, sir. I'm not. We'll, we'll just see. We'll just see. PM later. PM. Sige, sige. Got you. Yes. <laughs> uh, like what you did last time, sir. Same. Oh, my God. Oh. Later, Rai. I'll send you the message. Rai. Oh, my God. Ninia, what about Ninia? Have you have you thought of a possible research problem? Ninia? Uh, what about Benjamin? Uh, no, sir. The composition of vegetables on, I know, like different okay, sorry. temperatures. Sorry, sorry, Benjamin. Can I ask you to say it again? Like the, you know, like how how long it takes for a vegetable to rot in different temperatures. Oh, okay. How long it takes for temperatures to rot in, for vegetables to rot in different temperatures? Yes, sir. What vegetables will this be? Will they be? Like, you know, um, like first, like I'll choose a leaf vegetable, then root crops, then, you know, like others, no pot. I think I think it would help you, Benjamin, for for the purpose of workability of your research, Benjamin. No? I think it would help if you'll focus on a particular type of vegetable, like you'll focus on root crops only, so as to create a comparison among the root crops. Yes, sir. So try to consider it, Chriselle. What about Chriselle? Have you thought uh, of a possible research problem, research topic? Sure, pa, sir. Pero maybe ano, sir, kanang renew renewable products from material recovery facility. Again, again, sorry. Renewable products from material recovery facility. Renewable products from material recovery facility. I I enlighten us. Can you please enlighten us? Uh, sir, like uh there's a project naman ko po daan sa municipality, sir, nga kaning, kaning, mat, kaning, facility, kaning a facility mag, English, mag collect English, English, mga, English, this facility will collect trashes and, and, and garbages, then I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of what products can I make betaw out of oh, this. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. Right, recycle. And then, by the time the product will like wait so the product is yet to be to be identified like what can be made yes, what sir. can still be made yes and then, i might change my mind okay okay but it's good that you have already thought of a possible topic because later on perhaps the direction will just also come out from there but that even if you will not go with your plan a plan b will still be related to that same topic but for something that is really workable or feasible. What about Troy? 
would would you not want yeah just a suggestion i just a suggestion would you not want to do, to experiment about uh plastic eating worms what there is yes plastic eating worms and styro eating worms like worms, it's available somewhere. Worms like worms that decompose styrofoams and uh I will, I will. and polyethylenes. Poly what's styro? I'm, poly styro, no? Poly polyethylene. Polyester. Polyester. It's like this, huh? if, if, whosoever wants to, do, like, this is just, I'm not sure if this is going to help, but to those who want to do that, the worms are available in Bohol B Farm. I will, I will, I will. The worms are available in Bohol B Farm. I've seen the worms myself. Polystyrene and polyethylene. Polystyrene and polystyrene, uh, polystyrene, polyethylene. Uh, there are there worms that can decompose them? You can buy the worms or are they yes, just you, like you can buy the worms and culture them yourselves. You can culture the worms. So that they can multiply and then you can do the you need not buy so many worms because I think one there's a particular container that it and it has that number of worms and it's probably two hundred to three hundred. And then you can just culture them later on so that they can multiply and you can do the rest of the experimentations at home. However, uh, another thing that study is already done in each and you. Never mind, the, just pretend like we did not know. But when the students did it in each and you, they had a lot of errors. Yeah. There were it's errors. It's in one of the books. Ah. Uh -huh. Will it be in one of the books? No, it's not there. Okay, I was planning to just kind of read their paper and see the errors, and then I will replicate. Yeah, but change it in a way that it will not have errors. If there is also one of you who'd like to do a service-oriented study, then go. But service-oriented yeah, studies so. might not have a good uh, a good number of days for you to be able to gather your data, especially you that. Huh? Service like, for instance, or... right, you'll try to create a store, and that there is a, not a store, a shop. You'll see the feasibility of that shop in your place, in your locality. How well will this shop uh, operate in this particular area? The, pro the problem there, I, it's all right that the, the crafting of the paper is fine, but perhaps the gathering of people or the, the gathering of data would serve to be a very big challenge. If there are others who would like to create a brick, you can. There are a lot of options that you can that you can experiment with bricks. Like if you want to use a brick, create a brick using rice hull, you can. If you want to create a brick using um, bottle caps, that's also done, that has already been experimented. But if you want to still replicate it, there might be some tweaking that you'll do with the composition of the brick, with the ratio of compositions in the brick, you can. If you want to use broken glass in a brick, that's also fine, but try to, try to consider your safety when you do your gather your when you create when you do the creation of the brick. Uh, questions, other questions, any concern? On Wednesday, after doing the FTs, there are no after answering the five questions in the module, I'll have to make sure that you will, yeah, you will have more or less finalized your plan of a topic and that hopefully by then there is now a final number of students in your class. So goodbye and thank you grade 12. Goodbye. Goodbye and thank you sir. Thank you sir. Thank you sir. Bye. Thank you sir.